Welcome to the first episode of Dane's Brain on Talking Chalk. And what is Talking Chalk? It is our way of taking our podcast, Dane's platform, and trying to mold it into something that was a little bit more, a little easier to access us and, and for us to engage the community a little bit more. So we're taking AMAs off of Instagram, DMs off of Instagram, emails text messages, anything along these lines that our listeners, our followers, and all these people that, that do engage with us on a regular basis, what you guys might have for us as far as questions are concerned. And then we're going to throw it into a four to six question platform where we can engage, talk about what your questions are, go a little bit more in depth and provide you guys the answers. And so this is a first episode and I'm going to dedicate this to Anthony Myers, who's fighting anaplastic astrocytoma. Anthony, let's go keep beating that cancer. Uh, look up Team 17 Strong if you're interested in, in what he's doing and what his fight is. And keep staying tuned on Instagram to follow uh, what he's doing in the weight room and how he's maintaining his strength and his lean muscle mass lean muscle mass while he fights brain cancer. So Jason's here. He's going to throw some questions my way. Let's roll. So first question, we got Phil Double L underscore 60. And he asks, how can I make the move from the 12 to the 16 pound shot easier? Okay, so a throws question right off the bat to start the uh, talk and chalk. I think to make that that transition easy, you've got to train with a heavy shot. And I think that that goes hand in hand with our training system at, at Garage Strength is that you're typically going to be handling various weighted shots all the way if you're a male, if you're a high school male from a 10 pounder all the way up to a 16 pounder. So I think that's the first key is to throw the various weights so that you learn how to engage and you learn how to utilize those different movements that you might feel in the circle with the different various uh, weights. And then on top of that, you just got to get strong. If you're stronger and you have good body awareness and you have a good technical model, follow the technical model, understand that strength in the weight room can apply to strength that you're going to gain in the, in the circle when you're training with those heavier implements. And when you're training with those light implements, train all the time, take, five to six days a week we're going to take up 30 to 40 throws lift a lot get strong make some progress and you'll transition to that 16 pretty well okay next up we got jake underscore gunning is creatine smart to take while intermittent fasting trying to lose weight trying to lose weight with creatine absolutely i think uh one of the biggest misconceptions is is oh i'm gonna uh, gain i'm gonna gain weight well there's a couple mechanisms to gaining weight that, that go into gaining weight with, uh, with, with creatine. And I think it's important to understand what are your goals. If you want to lose weight, um, the best way to lose weight is to have more lean muscle mass. Okay. So if we have more lean muscle mass, we're going to get, we're going to be leaner. And in your mind, you're going to be losing weight, but ideally what's going to end up happening is you're going to feel more confident because you have more lean muscle mass and in turn, you're going to be losing, um, fat or adipose tissue. So, as far as taking creatine during intermittent fasting, absolutely, I think it's awesome. I don't think intermittent fasting is going to be around as long as people think it might be around. I think it does have its role in restoring health. It does have its place in uh, learning to have uh, diet maintenance and, and things like that or diet control. But I don't think it's sustainable very, very, very long term. Um, that's another discussion. But I think creatine taking, I would take creatine all the time. It's it's legitimately one of the best supplements that you can take and always get it from Crea Strength from Earth Fed Muscle. B underscore Hyde 24 asks, why are you so small? Oh, geez. So uh, that's Dustin Hyde. So Dustin actually trains with us online and he just benched 315 yesterday as a sophomore for the first time. He snatched 185 and he's cleaned 275 as a sophomore. So that's pretty good. Dustin, I think you're small. Um, <laughs> size wise as far as me being smaller i lost 60 pounds uh that i think a lot of that has to do with just my nutrition but on top of that dealing with with my uh, arthritic elbow I, I struggle to snap i can't snatch anymore i can't do olympic lifts i can't do jerks anymore so my size has diminished a little bit um i can't bench as much as i would like to i can't pull as much as i would like to i think that typically is the reason why i'm a little smaller so we got a question in from our friends at Lift Lab. What do you consider a heavy day for snatching? Uh, Dan Brown sent me some good questions on for so a heavy day for snatching. I think it all depends on where you're at in your in your program. What's the goal of that block? I think it's easy to it, it's easy to sit there and say, okay, um, 
a heavy snatch day would be anything over 83 to 87 percent that's generally what i would say would be a heavier snatch day uh but it all depends on if i'm if you know we use parabolic periodization and and that typically would be an undulating uh scheme of periodization influenced by uh schmidt bleicher and i think that that for for if if, if i was in a volume program um focusing on technique a, a heavy day might be 80 to 82 percent if i'm in an intensity phase uh my my heavy my heavy snatch competitive movement uh might be 85 to 89 or you know 85 plus percent so i think it it really does vary it really is based around what you know what your goals are for that specific block but ideally um you would typically say anything over 83 percent would be a heavy snatch day for Dan, it might be uh, his heavy snatch might might be 50 kilos. For me, my heavy snatch day might be like 130 kilos. From Christian underscore Walton, most trainers say cleaning is bad for shoulders. Should baseball players clean? Cleaning is bad for shoulders. First, I'm gonna do a little shameless plug and say that every baseball player that's watching should go buy our in-season baseball program, which is a two to three day lift. If you want to maintain your strength in the baseball season, uh, we also have Olympic weightlifting and sports performance book coming out within the next six to seven weeks. I recommend you buy that because you're going to understand why this question is cleaning bed for shoulders is just ridiculous. I think baseball along with soccer and basketball are some of the most undertrained sports in the world today. Um, and, and it, this question it, it just shows me why i think if anything snatch would be would be I, I could concede snatch a little bit for for cleaning specifically i don't i think it's good i think you're going to learn how to have a little bit more mobile lats you're going to have a little bit more mobile triceps your wrists are going to be a little bit more mobile you're going to have more range of motion you're going to have trunk stability you're going to have core strength because you're going to be absorbing the uh, you're going to have force absorption when you're receiving that clean you're gonna have you're gonna learn how to reuse the energy when you do hit a clean in the bottom of that catch. You're gonna learn how to to then utilize that out on the field. So I think that that question, you know, narrowing down to oh it's bad for my shoulders. Well, even if it was, let's just say it was, which it's not, but let's say it was bad for my shoulders. You just had six positives around it, and that's where you've got to sit there as a coach and be like, okay, so the trade-off is maybe this this kid every six every three to six months he gets his, his shoulders get a little banged up when he's cleaning but he absorbs force better he's faster he's stronger he comes out of the batter's box quicker he steals more bases he reacts quicker to the ball coming off the bat well there's your trade-off there you you answered your own question so um i think that that's the best way to approach the, the baseball questions and just recognize you know i always sit there and i'm like sammy sosa mark mcguire bobby uh, not bobby bonds barry bonds all those dudes were all sauced up. We know that they were all on gas. We also know that they hit more home runs than anybody else in the history of, of the league, right? We understand that. They had a large amount of lean muscle mass. They hit a lot of home runs. Barry Bonds was a decent fielder. When he got gassed up and he aged, he wasn't as good as, of a fielder. Um, Sammy Sosa was a terrible fielder, but mainly because he just couldn't catch the ball. Um, Mark McGuire, okay, as a first baseman, but with what I, where I'm going is that it's easy to increase strength. These are grown ass men. They're the age 20 to 30. They could get in the weight room two to three days a week and it would not screw up their, their competition at all. It wouldn't screw up their, their batting at all. And, and I believe if they would focus more on their strength training, they could get to Barry Bonds level. They could get to Mark McGuire's level. They could get to Sammy Sosa's level without going on the gas. So no, that question's stupid. Oh no, the question's good. The question's good. Strength coaches that train baseball players tend to be ridiculously dumb. We have one from Trashman86. All right, Trashman. What's more important for a pitcher, the core or the shoulder? In order, uh, I think in terms of training. In terms of training, um, I like to do for pitchers because it's just such a terrible, terrible, horrible athletic movement um, that I don't recommend anybody doing because you're just going to end up destroying your elbow and your shoulder uh, and a little bit of your lower back. I think as far as training specifically, I think it's better to train uh, movements that are going to target your gut and movements that are that will target your trunk in general because if you're using movements that are going to target your trunk and your, your, your gut a little bit more effectively, what ends up happening is 
you learn how to utilize your trunk when you're throwing. You, you learn how to utilize your legs a little bit more when you're throwing. And, you, and in turn, your shoulders should stay a little bit more, a little bit healthier long term. Um, I, obviously, you've still got to train your shoulders. You still have to improve the, the, your work on the mobility in your, in your shoulder girdle. Work on, you know, doing Ys, doing Ts, doing Ws, doing uh, standing external rotation with dumbbells. I even think you should be doing neutral grip benches to focus on your shoulders when you are, if you are a pitcher, just to keep that, that joint tight and uh, aware of what's going on. But ultimately, if it came back to it, I'm gonna focus on the trunk. I'm gonna focus on cleans. I'm gonna focus on front squats. I'm gonna focus on single leg squats. I'm gonna focus a little bit on power snatches um, just so that as a pitcher, you do learn how to have a better stride length. You do learn how to have a better ability to recruit from other areas, not just your arm if you're trying to throw the gas. Not steroids, but actually fastballs. From Jacob Throws Things, do you have a book on how to write lifting programs and such for people? Jacob, thank you for that question. Um, I don't have a book right now. I will say that I've been working on this in the background. We do have a Weightlifting You seminar that's on the Garage Strength website that you can see. That it's, the seminar is called Programming a Champion. There's 21 um, videos within that seminar that you can purchase. I believe it's $29.99 and you'll really get a good introduction into the type of programming and the system that we tend to use when we're when we're working with with developing a weightlifting or, or any type of strength program um i do want to do this i want to do this within the next year i've got two books i have one book i just started that well one book we just finished one book i'm starting right now that i, I really want to punch out in the next six to eight weeks that i want to finish and then start working on the edits and images and all that stuff and then following that book is where i want to start working on a, a periodization programming uh book i think the biggest thing that i struggle with is one i'm i'm always concerned because people steal my shit. people steal my content all the time uh, when we put stuff out on YouTube, when we put stuff out on Instagram, people love to take it and never give me any kudos, which is fine. Um, but I do want to do it. I'd say buy the Weightlifting You seminar first and then um, just stay tuned over the next six to eight months for that next that next periodization book to come out. Uh, in the meantime, hit us up on social media if you want more, if you want us to answer more of your questions, participate in the AMAs, DM us, text us, tweet at us, email us, go to our website, garagestrength.com, get in on our newsletter, and then follow us on Facebook, Garage Strength Farm. Peace.